Good day everyone. Welcome again to Hematology Laboratory. I am Lynn Brent and Purpose and I'll be your lecturer for today's um, subject. So on week three, we've discussed about the steps and procedures of venipuncture using the, the syringe method. But on week four, we'll be discussing again a new topic, venipuncture using evacuated tube system or the ETS method. So for our objectives, we have the following, to know about the blood collection tubes and the equipment used in venipuncture using um, evacuated tube system and to discuss the ETS method. So here are the general blood collection equipment used in the venipuncture. So we have the blood drawing station, the phlebotomy chairs, the equipment carriers, which can be handheld or in carts, gloves, and then we also have antiseptics and disinfectants, wherein the antiseptics prevent or inhibit growth of microbes, but do not necessarily kill them. So a good example of which is um, our 70% ethanol and isopropanol. Next would be the disinfectant, which is used to remove or kill microbes on surfaces and instruments. So meaning they are inanimate objects, used in inanimate objects. So they are not basically or safe for the skin. So we also have the gauze or the cottons. We have the bandages and the tape and needles and sharp container. We also have vein locating device such as the infrared device when uh, used in locating difficult veins, for example, in obese patient and etc. We also have the tourniquet needles which has um, parts, we have the bevel, the, sh the shaft, the hub, and the lumen. We also have this term gauge, which indicates the number that relates to the diameter of the lumen. So the larger the number, the smaller the actual diameter of the needle. So 21 gauge needle is the standard used in um, venipuncture. So usually the length of the needle is 1 or 1.5 inch. So according to OSHA, they recommend that the needle or the equipment to be used has a safety feature. When we click the, the safety device, the needle will be covered or will be, um, yes, it will be covered so that it will be preventing the occurrence of needle prick. So next, we will be discussing the evacuated tube system. So according to CLSI, it is the most common and the preferred system for blood collection. So it is also called a multi-sample technique because it can collect uh, multiple samples because we are, we are using a two-way needle. So as you can see in the picture, um, we use multi-sample needle or the two-way needle because we have a needle here and another needle here. It allows multiple tubes of blood to be collected during a single venipuncture. Usually in a venipuncture, we can only get a certain amount of blood like 3 ml, 5 ml, or 10 ml. So in this ETS system, we can use or we can get a lot of blood samples as long as um, our needle is um, located or puncturing a good uh, diameter or a good lumen or patent lumen of the vein. So we also the OSHA requires that the needle tube holder with needle attached to be disposed as a unit. So in the Philippines, this is not applicable since we are in a third world country. So ito ang tube holder natin. We only disinfect it and reuse it. But ideally, it should be uh, disposed as a unit. So the tube size is based on the age of the patient and the amount of blood needed and the size and condition of the patient vein. So if ever that you notice that the patient vein is very small and it's not so patent, so we can use other collection system, such as our discussion on week three that we can use syringe type or wing butterfly set. So our evacuated tubes or the collection tubes has its uh, predetermined vacuum. So the purpose of vacuum is to automatically fill the blood because of the negative pressure inside the vacuum. So 
the vacuum is pre-measured by the manufacturer so that the tube will fill the exact amount of the blood indicated. For example, in this lavender or pink top tube, it only uh, has a capacity of 2 ml so the tube or the vacuum inside the tube will only suck blood that is 2 ml. But there are premature losses of the vacuum that would lead to failure to fill the blood with the exact fill line. For example, in this uh, tube, 2 ml. So this will result to short draw. What do you mean by short draw? It means that the tube is underfilled. So as you can see in the picture that uh, it should be 2 ml like here. It's ideally 2 ml. So the tube number 1 and the tube number 2 has short draw because it does not um, level to the fill line. So this could affect the integrity of the patient sample and the result of the, of the patient. So we also have additives in, inside our evacuated tube or the collection tube. So additives are substances placed within the tube. So underfilled tube that contains additive will have an incorrect additive blood ratio. This could lead to inaccurate test result and it could lead also to clotting of the blood sample because uh, there is incorrect additive to blood ratio. So we should also take note that uh, each evacuated tube has its own expiration date. So before using any evacuated tube, or any equipment in the laboratory, we should also take note and check for the expiration dates. Next, uh, we are now finished with the ETS. So I will now briefly discuss lung, the syringe system. So it is used for patients with small or difficult vein. In the previous slide, when we assess for the patient vein, we also think of what is the most appropriate um, collection system that we can use. So if there is presence of small or there is difficult vein in uh, example pediatric population or geriatric population we could use syringe system so it is very important to take note that um, the needle also has a parts the bevel the shaft the hub and also the graduated barrel and the plunger of the syringe so when bear when drawing blood uh, venous blood we should always take note that we should slowly pull back the plunger to create the vacuum which causes the barrel to fill with blood because if there would be excessive pulling of the plunger and very fast yung pagpull natin ng plunger, it could cause stress to the red blood cells or the other cells which can cause the patient sample to be hemolyzed. So the integrity again of our patient sample will be compromised. Next will be the wing infusion set or most commonly called the butterfly system. So it is used for collecting blood samples for small or difficult veins. Again, similar to our syringe type. So it is commonly used when we are using or when we get blood samples from hand veins on the dorsal side of our hand, pediatric patient, and also the most common used uh, gauge in butterfly system is 23 because diba, the larger the number is um, the smaller the size of the needle. So he, it looks like a butterfly kaya siya tinawag na butterfly or wing infusion set. So it could also be attached to the syringe or also to the uh, needle holder used in the ETS. So here are the important notes, never transfer blood from one additive tube into another additive tube because it could interfere with the test. For example, if you are using the same tube with the same additive, so mixing together will create an excessive or excess of additive. So it could compromise the integrity again of our um, sample. So we also invert the tube immediately after collection, but we should take note that we uh, invert the tube gently because if we shake vigorously it would cause stress again to the hemolysis as uh, stress again to the red blood cells and would eventually cause hemolysis so we also have anticoagulants these are substances that prevent blood from clotting so um example of which are anticoagulant that chelates or precipitate calcium i mentioned this on our week um week two or week three lecture that uh, the most commonly used anticoagulants that chelate or attach or binds to calcium are uh, the EDTA, the oxalates, and 
the citrate and also the yes that's uh yun sila then um why chelate the calcium because it makes the calcium unavailable for the coagulation process so we also have the heparin which is an anticoagulant which inhibits the thrombin needed to convert fibrinogen to fibrin in the coagulation process thus um preventing the blood to clot next we have the mnemonics for the order of draw so this is very important for us to be, to be uh, familiarized and memorize this order of draw since this is recommended by our clsi so we first collect for the sterile tube for the blood culture next we have the coagulation tubes we have the light blue top next would be the non-anticoagulated we have the serum tube with or without gel or clot activators next would be the heparinized tube for the green top and then edta tube for the lavender top and lastly for the glycolytic inhibitor tube which contains sodium fluoride which is uh, the gray top so be very familiar with this order of draw because this is constantly uh, asked in the board exam and in uh, our examination so here is the summary table for the order of draw the stopper color and the rationale for collection of order so take note to familiarize and read this table next we will be discussing briefly the steps in the venipuncture using the evacuated tube system first we should always establish good rapport because it could uh, make the person at ease and make uh, feel to the person that the, pa the medical technologies is concerned with the patient and when we establish good rapport we establish good communication so the patient will will trust us next we review the test requisition order so when we review the test acquisition order or test requisition order we review for the demographics the name the age the patient sex the address the birth date of the patient and other additional tests that could identify the patient so we also take note also for the test to be done because when we know the test to be done we have an idea what tubes to use and how much or what is the volume to be collected and also take note for the urgency of the test when we see stat in the request form so we we will do the test immediately usually we release the result 15 to 30 minutes after the collection we should also take note for special precautions we will ask the patient ma'am do you have any allergies to previous venipuncture or do you have latex sensitivity if the patient knows what is latex next we should approach and identify and prepare the patient so you must also identify yourself good morning ma'am i am your medical technologist i'm win brand corpus so you should also explain the procedure so that your patient has an idea um what will be what are you going to do with the procedure and to the patient and lastly you should obtain consent so ma'am um are you ready po to proceed with the procedure then next will be positioning the patient so your patient should be comfortably sitting on the phlebotomy chair then you ask every time you touch the patient you ask for permission especially when applying the tourniquet and you should always ask your patient to make a fist because this could help you um, identify more or clearly the veins in her, uh, his or her hand then when selecting the vein we should also take note that it is best to collect um, first in at the median cubital vein which is our first choice because it is more stable and more anchored next would be the cephalic vein which is uh, somewhat less stable but se second choice for the venipuncture site and the least choice for the anticubital veins is the basilic vein because uh, we've discussed this already that it underlies nerve and arterial vessel the ulnar or the, or the median nerve and the brachial artery so to prevent uh, any complication or hitting the artery or the nerve we select first the median cubital vein or the cephalic vein next will be the cleaning that and drying the site so it is very important to 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 do an aseptic technique so that we could not um inoculate 
um, micro microorganism in the blood or in in vitro or in vivo of the blood vessel. So drying of the site is also very important since we've discussed this already that uh, when the patient site is not thoroughly dried, it could lead to hemolysis since alcohol can hemolyze the blood sample. And it is also very painful for the patient. Mahapdi yung alcohol if napunta sa blood. And then we prepare the equipment. And then um, we remove the tourniquet ha, before uh, when we are interviewing or we are cleaning the site so that we could prevent the hemoconcentration because the maximum amount of time that our tourniquet is to be applied is one minute. Then we reapply the tourniquet. And then when we are ready to puncture the site, we say to the patient, Ma, magtusok na po ako or sharp scratch. To end when we establish the blood flow, we now collect for blood. And then we observe for the proper order of draw, specific for the test. And then before um, removing the needle, we remove first or release the tourniquet. So when we remove the needle, we place a ga gauze or cotton. And then after which we label and gentle, we put the uh, blood in the um, evacuated tube. Then we label, we, we mix it. And it is very important tiba, to do not mix the tube vigorously because it could cause hemolysis. And then we discard the sharps to avoid puncturing others and ourselves because this is also very important to avoid needle stick injury. And then we thank our patient and sanitize ourselves and also the equipment used. So the last step would be the transportation of specimen to the laboratory. So it is very important before leaving the patient, um, you must double check if siya ba talaga yung patient and do not forget to thank the patient because uh, as a courtesy to the patient we should also thank them so i think this is my last slide so do you have any questions about the evacuated tube system this is very similar to our syringe type but we are using here a uh, two two-way needle and we can collect um many blood volumes because um, of the evacuated tube system and the two-way needle. So any questions? Okay, thank you for listening and study well.